Unity features a wide range of tools to create entire game worlds. A great example of this is Tunic that uses ProBuilder to achieve impressive results. In the Unity Package Manager you can find a range of useful packages to install that make planning and designing your levels easy. The 2D tile mapping package can be used to lay out sprites for 2D games using a traditional tile painting system. The Terrain Tools package has brush modifiers and alpha maps designed to make your level environments look professional and impressive, including realistic looking mountains, canyons, rivers and cliffs. The Pro Builder package is a full 3D studio inside of Unity that can be used to either block out your level using simple 3D shapes or create production quality 3D models directly in Unity. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through my workflow for greyboxing a multiplayer battle arena style game using Pro Builder. Greyboxing is an early development phase that happens during the planning stage. It allows you to lay out your level plan in 3D using simple shapes so you can play through it and check to see how it plays and ensure it all looks correct. You can identify any problems at this stage and fix them before going into the actual level design stage. So any adjustments are made here to save time and money later. Now there are multiple ways to use ProBuilder and there is a link to an ebook in this video description where you can find out more. But in this video, I'm gonna be using a modular layout plan. These are individual items such as doors, walls and floors that can be easily snapped together in different variations to create a wide variety of levels. By the end of this video, I will have completed a level plan which I will then use in a later video to create production ready 3D models. I am using the free starter assets first person controller from the Unity Asset Store. In the Starter Assets folder, we find our first person controller in the prefabs and we drag the nested parent into the hierarchy. Right click, prefab and unpack. Now I can take out the main camera, follow player camera and player capsule and delete the nested parent object. The player capsule is located at position zero in the scene and we only need one main camera so we can delete this top one and the player character is now set up. To install ProBuilder, you can go into the package manager. It is in the Unity registry and you will find it in the list. Once you have installed it, there will be a tab called samples. If you are using URP or HDRP, you will need to download the shaders and materials for those pipelines. You can now open ProBuilder by going to tools, ProBuilder and ProBuilder window. I started the design process with a 2D floor plan created in Photoshop. I knew that I wanted to use the Unity grid and each of these squares is 10 meters by 10 meters. Now in the image, each of these squares is 100 by 100 pixels. I can now create a quad to display the floor plan. Make sure it sits at position zero. 90 degrees rotation on the X so that it's facing straight up and I'm going to give this a scale of 100 by 100 so it has a square ratio. The image is 1000 by 1000 pixels also a square ratio. This ensures the image will not be stretched or squashed when applied to the quad. I will move the quad forward on the z-axis by 50 meters so it begins where the player is located and in the materials I can drag in floor plan 1 and now it's set up. However, we can see that the image is not lined up with the grid, so I will move it until the squares on the image line up perfectly with the grid. Now I want to switch on snapping and set my snap values to 1 meter. To add a floor tile, go to add shape and with the cube selected, I know this is 10 meters by 10 meters. So that's 10 on the X and 10 on the Z. I will also give it a height of 0 0.1. Now hold shift on the keyboard to preview the shape and move it around. Then left click to create the object. 
move it to position 0. To create a wall piece, once again go to the new shape. This time I know the depth is going to be on the x axis, so I will make that 0 0.1 and the height is 10 meters. Now hold shift to preview and left click to create the object. As long as you have the object mode selected and the move tool selected, you can move the object. To create a door, we can select the door shape. We will make it 10 on the X. And for the Z, which is the door's depth, I will make it 0 0.1. The pediment height, I will make two. And the side width, I will also make two. Left click to create, and you can rotate the door. If you hold control, it will rotate at five degree increments. Now I can move it into place. I want to name these items correctly, making it easier to find them. And I will create prefabs of each unique item, dragging them into a prefabs folder. Now the reason for creating prefabs is to make the workflow more efficient. I will duplicate the original, creating lots of instances. If I then want to change all of those instances, I only need to modify the original prefab. If you need at any point to assign the Pro Builder default material, you can find this in the Samples folder, Pro Builder, and either URP or HDRP, and in the Material folder. Now in the Material Editor, you can drag the Pro Builder default material into the next available slot, and selecting an object, you can apply that material. The level can be easily designed by duplicating objects and following the floor plan. The objects snap together, making this process very easy. Each new unique item, such as wall one, floor two, wall two, etc., are prefab during the stage. The 2D floor plan is now becoming a 3D prototype for a game level. The simple primitive shapes are edited using ProBuilder's editing tools, and you can download the ebook in the video description to learn more about ProBuilder editing. This layout stage can be easily completed within an hour or two, making this process both time effective and cost effective. After laying out the bottom floor, I have organized it in the hierarchy, placing everything in named folders, which are simply empty game objects which have been renamed to match the items within. Everything at the moment shares the same grey material. However, we can assign objects a vertex colour as long as we are using this Pro Builder default material. For floor one, we can go into the prefab and give it a blue vertex colour. Now all instances have updated. Doors could also be orange. The fan housing object could be yellow. And this makes everything easier to see. As well as the basic shapes, we also have the poly shape tool. And this can be used to create custom objects by left clicking points in a unique pattern. And then when the points meet at their origin, extruding the surface by moving the mouse up to define the height. At certain points during this stage, you will want to play the game and check it out from your character's perspective. We are checking the scale of the objects to ensure they are accurate. We make sure we can fit through the doors. We make sure the level size is a good size for the player to move through and make sure the character can climb up ramps or stairs. And I can see that these columns look a bit too wide. If I go into the column prefab, I can modify them all at once. Now I can edit the shape, making the X3 and the Z3. Now when I exit the prefab, the objects have all become thinner, and that looks more effective. Notice how easy it is to modify objects at this stage. If these were completed 3D assets that had taken, let's say, two weeks to make, well, it could take another week to modify, costing time and money. So it's better to sort these kind of issues here at the grey boxing stage. I can then duplicate my lower floor plan 
by clicking Ctrl and D or going to Edit and Duplicate. I then move the middle floor plan up on the Y by 10 meters and that brings it up to the correct level. Then I add the floor plan to material. I will start by creating the wall object. I can drag in the wall one prefab and set the Y to 10. Now if I switch off the floor plan to object, I can see that the two wall pieces are not lined up correctly. Click on the wall and hold V for vertex on your keyboard. I can now drag the corner vertex until it snaps with the wall beneath. The two items are now snapped perfectly. For the door 3, this one has an unusual shape. I can add a new door object. This time the X is going to be 20 meters, 10 on the height and 0.1 for the depth. Hold shift and left click to place it above the door on the base level. I'll switch off the floor plan too and check that it is correctly in place. Notice there are no side faces. So now going to edge mode I can click on the two corresponding edges and click bridge to create a new face that connects the two edges. Now change over to face mode and select the two faces. I want to extrude by exactly 10 meters. Click extrude and notice how it now perfectly lines up. Now on the other side, click on an edge, and if you press F on the keyboard it will frame the selection. Once again, bridge. Select the faces and extrude. Now I want to create a unique shape. Go to edge mode and add an edge loop. And it lines up with the map. Do the same on the other side. Now select all the door faces, holding shift to multiple select. Also select the ones on the front. Now I can move the door backward until it lines up with the design. And once I have laid out all three floors with vertex colors used to identify floors, walls, doors, etc. I can then mirror the part we have here to complete the map. Now I've placed all three floors in a new empty game object called level half. I can now duplicate that with Ctrl and D. I'll set the Z scale to minus one to mirror the items and I can now snap the two objects together to create a complete level. And we can begin testing through this scene, checking for any issues, as well as ensuring it is both fun and challenging enough to engage players. This is quite a creative stage and you might add items that you'd not even considered before. So grey boxing is an integral part of the planning stage. During playtesting, the developers can begin creating key game mechanics. Perhaps I want to adjust my main player to enable them to jump from one side over onto this bridge. However, my jump is not powerful enough. So I can go into the settings for the player and begin adjusting values. Now when we are happy with layout, we can send the assets to the art department, either in this scene as ProBuilder objects, or we can export them as OBJ files to be used in other 3D software. You can also go into the package manager, download the FBX exporter to export FBX files. While the art department spends a few months creating the final 3D models, the developers can continue working in the grey box level to begin creating code and testing out gameplay. Once the final 3D models have been created, they can be brought into the scene and the primitive shapes are replaced with high quality assets. We can also leave notes using TextMesh Pro 3D objects. I will indicate that this is going to be an extraction fan. And perhaps in here I will put a pickup. We can add a nav mesh for computer controlled AI characters. 
Now, in order to do this, you will need to go into the package manager and in the Unity registry, install AI navigation. So you get access to the AI components. I have added an empty game object called NavMesh and given it a NavMesh surface component. That allows me to bake the blue mesh that you see in the scene. The AI characters will then be able to walk in any of the blue areas and this is used to ensure that they don't walk through walls. A simple enemy is being created from a capsule with a NavMesh controller that allows the computer to control it and a rigid body component to handle physics. And a simple AI script that handles the movement. I've put in a few extra enemies to test the AI navigation. There are also some gaps in the nav mesh for the main player and text objects. So if I switch these off and go back to the nav mesh object, I can clear and rebake, and now the gaps have gone. We can switch off the visual for the nav mesh by either switching off the gizmo icon or by clicking on the three dots in the scene window and choosing overlays and AI navigation. In the surfaces section, we can uncheck show nav mesh. Now we can right click on the overlays menu to hide it. When I click play, I can now check to make sure the enemies are correctly targeting the player and they are not walking through walls. Make sure that they can correctly navigate their way through the doors. We can also check the light baking. So if I open the lighting tab from the rendering menu, and I create a new light setting. If you have a good graphics card, choose progressive GPU. Set light mapping resolution to two texels per unit and the parameters to very low so that it will bake really quickly. The directional light needs to be on mixed or bake, so it will be used in the bake. The two halves of the game items all need to be marked as static to show up. Choose Change Children to affect all items. I can now click Generate Lighting to bake a light map. Once the baking is complete, we can see which areas are light and which areas are dark. In darker areas, we need to think how to illuminate the area. So on this column, I might want to add an emissive material or light source. So having a light bake can influence the designs of objects. I could test the light source by right clicking on the item and add a point light. Give it a range of 30 and an intensity of 15. And that's going to give me an idea of how that will look with illumination. And that covers grey boxing a scene. So we have covered the different steps involved for a snapping system. Now you can of course use different methods of grey boxing to create your levels. In the description for this video you will find a link to download an ebook covering ProBuilder to discover more. Thanks for watching.